Hi, I'm Gary. Hi, I'm Louise. And this is our Literacy and Art. Yay! Hello. Uh, right, what we'll do in a normal lesson is we'll have an image up on the board, such as this building by Hundervasa, and we'll get the kids starting off by talking about the artwork going through Bloom's taxonomy. So we'll start off with law order thinking. Feel free to play along with this and answer these questions in your own time. Um, but first of all, we've got law order thinking, we've got describing, we've got remembering those key skills. Then we'll move up to understanding, so we're thinking about the purposes. This is really good because sometimes there might be a right answer, sometimes there might be a bunch of right answers, and that's fine. Um, then we move on to yellow, which is applying, so we're talking about the processes and the materials. Again, uh, we're moving up the scale, up Bloom's taxonomy, and now we're up into the middle order. So analysing is shown in green, um, and usually we'll go for something simple like similarities and differences. So we're getting the kids uh, to think about analysing and comparing features of the work. Next up is evaluating, which we show in blue. and. Basically, it's getting the kids to form an opinion about the work and to obviously back that up with reasons. Finally, creating, which is at the top of the Bloom's taxonomy, is the most difficult and most high order thinking. Um, if you were the architect, what would you change? If you were the artist, what would you do differently? If you were working with the artist, what would be better about it? How could you make your work in response to this? For higher up the school, for Key Stage 4 and 5, they'll have a copy of this and it will allow them to then write extended answers in their own time, in their own coursework. Obviously they don't have to answer every single question, some are more important for certain artworks and so that will help them to produce a more structured, longer form answer. So if Gary, if you go back to the last sl the slide previous and just take over for a second. Okay. I think... What's fantastic about what Gary's designed here is when you actually have an observation in the lesson, what we are finding what's really good is that you can target these certain questions, so maybe your level fours for the bottom one, and as you work up, you're targeting learners in class discussion, your level sixes up at the top and further on. Also, what's quite interesting about this is don't accept the first answer, okay? What we've seen in an inspection that we had recently just about literacy and art is that don't take the first answer, make them extend upon the word and don't accept one word answers, that's a no-no, extended responses only and I think that's what been a big tick for us within the department. Thanks Louise, now you've heard from us, let's hear from some of the kids and how they use blooms. Hi Dion. Hi Miss Gary. Uh, Dion would you like to talk to me about literacy and art? Um, the use of blooms arrow for literacy and art for evaluating. Um, and how do you find using the Bloom's Arrow? It's really, really easy to follow. Can you explain to me how is it easy to follow? Because you just have the uh, six colours and basically you just read it and it tells you exactly which questions to answer when you're writing. And how does that help you then? Um, it helps because sometimes you don't know what to talk about when you're like discussing your artwork. So, for example, at the moment we're doing about Jenny Savile. How's that? How's the Bloom's Arrow been helping you with that? Um, because sometimes you don't know how to interpret our work, so it's really helpful for that kind of thing, like understanding it. And before we got the Bloom's Arrow, what did you used to do? I used to need a, I used to need a lot of help. Like I could do it more independently now that we have a Bloom's Arrow. And do you think there's a point in evaluating art and writing about art? Yeah, because if you don't talk about it, people might un not understand what message you're trying to get across. And what do you think of like the group critiques that you do with me? They're really good as well, because they give you ideas for how you can improve your work. So, for example, like for someone who's outside of an art department, how do we do our group critiques? Um, we we'll basically just gather everybody around and we'll all explain what artwork and why we did it and how we did it and what we don't like about it and everybody puts across their views. Alright, hello Mackenzie. Hello. Um, can you tell us how we've helped you with literacy and art? Oh, I don't know, like, 
<laughs> All right, then, how do you find when you have to do your history, how do we help you? Yeah. Tell the useful information where to get things from, who to look at, um, stuff where we should look, you get with newspaper articles and stuff like that. What do you think of our, our little old Bloom's arrow? What do you think about that? It's very useful, I think. In what way? It's champion. I'm glad it's champion, but in what way is it helpful? Because it shows you the questions and then you've just got to answer them, really. And how do you feel your evaluations improved when you had me in year 11 to now in sixth form? I think they've got much better because I know what stuff to write down and what I should be looking for. And does it make you think more about artwork or less? More. In what way? It makes you look at like more of like the materials he uses, what you think about it. And just other stuff. And are you enjoying sixth form with us? Yes, I am. Are you going to miss us lots and lots when you leave? <laughs> Don't know, mate. I have a <laughs> think about yeah, it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Paper is so in this season. Um, listen, anyway, have you seen Louise? We're supposed to be shooting this video. <laughs> you just caught me there in my literacy corner. Um, I'm just reading our cross-curricular activity. We did an a animal farm book cover launch where English taught them about the theory of book covers and then in the art lessons we had to come up with a design. All the lessons were planned together and what's been good about this is I don't know if you know about our academy but we've also got primary sites involved in us. So across the key stages we have stories from across all of the academies from primaries to secondaries to the centre and published in a book produced by one of our learners. I reckon whoever did that graphic design on that brick cover must be some kind of genius. Maybe. Mm. You have just caught me reading in my literacy corner. Um, our literacy corner is in every classroom in the art department with our word of the week. If learners would use that in the lesson, they get five reward points. Also, phonics. This is something that we're trying here at the academy. You know, when we've seen in Ofsted inspections and what we've been prepped about in our inspections is that we have to use the phonics to help spell out the word rather than just spelling the word for the learner. It's all about the learners sort of learning how to spell as well. So what we have here is we have our literacy file. So learners know to come in here and previously mentioned can access Bloom's arrows, they can access sentence starters, they can access, you know, works such as artists, they can even access a dictionary. The simple thing of just putting a dictionary or a thesaurus in your room can be really helpful. We've also got our eight ways of thinking to help us talk about our questioning as well. And what, more importantly, we'll go back to the... Uh, What's in the file, file Louise? Well, I'll tell you, sir. And what was in, so again, sentence starters that learners could just pick up and choose which one they want in different formats, quite interesting, we'll get back to that about the fonts and why we use different fonts even more sentence starters even more sentence starters ah, here going back to Bloom's again, we know Solo is the new thing at the moment but at the moment we're finding Bloom's works for art we may be going Solo but we're sticking with Bloom at the moment um, again, differentiation, remembering for your lower order thinking students, keywords, facts, contents, maybe even uses of the red hat um, for feelings, white hat for facts, understanding. So each seat is specific to the certain blooms. So it's just extending on Gary's Bloom's arrow. Um, I've just taken you on a tour of my classroom. I've got my A to Z, again, in the joint up font that Gary would talk about. Uh, we also have in my classroom chairs on tables because cleaning um, news articles relating to the subjects we are auction sites talking about things about selling of artworks so facts for people to read for learners to read also um, we had a celebrating cultures unit Gary did Russian dolls as he would and I did the Great Wave um, my colleague did African Mass my other colleague did about India but I did about the Great Wave and what was great about this popular work is that there was actually, you know, a storybook already based on it. So again, what we would start, I quite had a 
sort of lower ability class, a bit of a nurture class, we would start every lesson with them doing a round robbing. So one would start off reading the sentence, and then the next learner would pass the book on, start the next sentence off. So again, it's just wherever you can think, where can I involve sort of written or reading or speaking and listening? I think speaking and listening is the main thing we push here. Um, go for it. <laughs> basically whatever idea you've got just try it because something links with the kids even to a point where we had fortune cookies and they were opening up fortune cookies and reading out their fortunes it all helps a little bit so I'll just pass you over to Gary oh hello Gary! There. Um, you've caught me in my literacy corner funny that um, anyways this is what I've got in mind and it is a selection of uh, French borrowings um, from French um, they're particularly important art words such as papier mache, mise en scène, uh, uh, ligne claire, uh, objet trouvé, really important words that we use in art that we've nicked from the French, because that's what we do, we nick things. Um, so, uh, yeah, the reason why we're doing this is because we've also got an exchange going on with uh, a couple of French schools as well, so it's one little way of making the kids aware of the connections between other cultures and how our language has developed and how art has developed by pinching them. Um, a word in terms of the typography, uh, this font here, in the uh, dark tone, in the black there, is called Segor Script, and that's really useful in terms of uh, getting the kids to know how to do joined up lettering. So if they can read joined up lettering, then they'll be able to write joined up lettering. It's good in terms of their, um, their progress for writing. Um, the academy, uh, the sorry, the design faculty, which we're a part of, uses Gill Sands as a font for signage because it is very clear and it also has a cultural background. It's the font used by the BBC and is very famous British font. Uh, the background font here, because these are French words, is in Garamond because Garamond is a particularly awesome French font. Um, yeah, so. Fonts and typeface is really important, um, not just for geeking out about fonts, because obviously that's important too, but in terms of making sure that something is readable, making sure that something is, is decorative, making sure that something is beautiful and appropriate. Um, a lot of people use Comic Sans because they think that it is usable and readable and helps kids with forming letters, but it's not always the case. In fact, there is an argument saying that it is an intensely ugly font and something that echoes unprofessionalism. And a way around that is by using fonts such as um, VAG Rounded, which has, it mimics the simplified uh, form of creating letters by writing them, but it also looks really professional and looks really quality as well. And obviously, as I mentioned, Sego Script just has that air of professionalism about it. Anyway, moving on, what have we got over here? Oh, wow, comics. Oh, brilliant. You've got Alison Sundland there by... Brian Talbot, you've got Understanding Comics, which you should all buy. You've got Hermit by my mate Andy. And you, oh, what's this? Granger Street by, uh, by me. What the, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, I make comics, and comics are brilliant, and they're a great way to get kids thinking about language, thinking about words and literacy. But it's also good to be thinking about their visual literacy in terms of sequences, in terms of what an image actually means, what it's trying to convey, how an image sits alongside words. It's good for building up things like the composition of still paintings of individual images, photography, and also film and video. And, oh, what's this? Well, this is um, a comic book that I made with uh, my Year 13 learners last year. Um, basically, through the process of um, researching comics artists, planning out their own uh, six-page submission for this anthology, they then went to the printers, got this thing published, and distributed it to the rest of the academy. Um, they went through the full process that I would normally do as a comics artist and they then had to do a pitch for, for finance, for funding for it and obviously getting it out to an audience as well which is a massively important thing as well. So they not only learnt a lot about visual literacy, about traditional literacy, but about speaking to people at different audiences. Obviously if you're asking for money for people you are sorting in a very different way to if you're telling people about your work or if you are just explaining what you've done or if you're trying to promote it. So that's what we do with that. Um, let's move over to this wall over here. 
There is um, a big whole community of, um, of small press comics and of illustration and of um, self-publishing in the United Kingdom at the minute, and it is a massive thing that I would urge you to get involved with and be aware of in some way. Um, there is one chap called Joe List who is a famous illustrator in, uh, in that community, and he does a project called The Annotated Weekender, which if you are unaware of, it involves him buying The Guardian on a Saturday, uh, getting the weekend magazine out, and drawing all over it. And it kind of involves you thinking about, um, thinking about the words, thinking about the background, thinking about the space, and how to make something visual out of that. Um, what we've done with our Year 11 class is we have given them a challenge of getting pages from the Guardian Weekend magazine and doing an annotated weekend, a version of them. So they've looked at how the letters and text fit into the image, any messages that they want to convey. And again, it plays on that visual literacy. What does this photograph mean out of context? What does it mean if I change the context? Well, it could mean anything. And invariably, it means some beautiful and amazing artwork. Thank you. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Paper is torn. Uh, <laughs> no, stop. Hang on. So just, <laughs> Should put them. I, I'll need. We'll need. So how? Oh no, no. So do you really know Kirch Fitters? No, no, because then that's like a bit. How, so did you really know Kirch Fitters? No, that's a bit shit, isn't it?